Welcome to BizTax Enterprise Technology Show. Our guest for today is Chen Yu Bui. He's the Senior Vice President, APAC, of SailPoint Inc. SailPoint Inc. is a leading global provider of identity security. Now, to tell us more about this, welcome to the show, Bui. Thanks, Brian. Thanks for having us uh, over here on your, on your show. Now, Bui, SailPoint was started in 2005. And, mm-hmm. and, and really very much an, uh, a front runner and really early in the space. Walk us through its history and its, its presence in the Asia Pacific region. Right. So uh, I think um, SailPoint has been around for 17 years. It's been a long history and just purely focusing on identity. Right? I mean, that's what we do um, since the inception by our founder um, 17 years ago. Um, and just a bit of overview, um, we have over the last 17 years, um, you know, taken more than 2,005 implementation across 65 countries for our customers across the world. Um, and if you kind of understand what identity security is about, it's about also being integrated and onboarding a lot of sources of identity and application. We have about 21,000 sources and application connected to a sale point platform across the world and about 11 million identities uh, under the management across several industries, uh, like banking, media, utilities, tech, financial, I mean, you name it, right? Cross industry, basically, right? Um, and we operate you know, across the world. Uh, we have a huge extensive partner network, um, working with global SIs, local SIs. Um, and in Asia, for example, we work with people like, um, partner like Napoleon, or the, you know, the, the what we call the global SIs, like um, Accenture, uh, PwC, Deloitte likes of that in KPMG, right? Um, we also work very closely with the Tech Alliance partner like uh, CyberArk, Proofpoint, Beyond Trust, um, you know, and, and others in the, in, the, uh, in what we do. Um, from APEC perspective, we have been in the region for the last seven years um, and very much invested in this region. We have a good cross uh, team across uh, many countries, um, you know, with people from sales, from technical, from support, uh, from uh, professional services and sort of customer success. So if you look at it, we really have been very much uh, in the region with the customers and supporting our customers uh, over the last seven years. Now, Boy, I want to uh, uh, get your insights and perhaps you breaking down the identity security and access management into a 101. Help mm-hmm. us to understand what this is all about and why is this important? Right. Well, if you kind of take your, let's take a bit, a step back in time, right? 17 years ago, identity management really is very much about governance, right? It's like, how do you know somebody have the right access to the right applications and, you know, you got to then do the certification, make sure it's okay, especially in the banks, for example, how do you know if you, Brian, works in the bank that you have got the right access to the right system and your boss certified that you have got the right access to the right system, right? So that's how it works, started it's like, as governance. But as time evolves, you will see that the identity management from has moved very much from governance into now very much in a core of, um, you know, basically an enterprise cybersecurity uh, position. And it's actually driven from many, many changes you see happening in the market, right? And what happens is that, um, you know, the way people work has changed tremendously, right? And if you look at the last three years, and, you know, three years has been, while it's a short time, but three years is also very long, and many things has happened in the last three years, right? So, and some of these things has accelerated in the way um, companies and enterprises change the way they actually operate and, um, and, and transform, right? Three years ago, when the pandemic started, um, you, you remember this, uh, you probably remember this in the days when it first started. I remember that uh, businesses are running out there to buy laptops, VPN licenses, you know, all to cater for business continuity. You, as a consumer, if you go out there and try to buy a laptop at that point in time, it's almost impossible in the first few months of the pandemic. Right. You remember those days, right? It was, it was crazy. But it actually tells you one thing, right? It actually accelerated the way business operate because they have to adapt, right? Um, there were big changes that happened and it's still happening today. Um, it, for example, changes in the working habit. If you take a step back, in the past, when you talk about work, it's all, really all about on-prem. You sit in the office, you do your work, but now the working has been has changed, right? People have now moved from, you know, being on-site to remote working, now to hybrid working style, right? And that's not going to go back, right? That trend basically is irreversible. It's going to just continue to move forward. 
Now, people are talking about hybrid workspace and so on and so forth. Now, what that bring about is that um, your enterprise environment has now changed, right? The mindset has always been, um, you know, to protect your enterprise as long as you have a, what do you call a gated environment. As long as you, people go through the gated environment, you should therefore consider them to be secure and therefore have access to your, all your resources. But think about this now, you are assessing your environment. Now you're allowing your workers to work from home and assessing your environment remotely. Now what that does is that you are not extending their vulnerabilities from their home environment into your enterprise. So if you think about it a little bit more, the enterprise security has evolved then because the perimeter security, the firewall and whatnot is no longer just as effective, right? And therefore identity is now becoming the centerpiece of um, enterprise security, right? And enterprise security is no longer just about protecting the endpoint and network, but it's really about when somebody gets into your network, how do you know that this person is, you know, who he say he is, and he has got the right access to the, to, to the technology he needs to access to, right? And therefore, this whole shift is now moving very much into um, what they call identity security, right? People talk about zero trust um, security architecture. It's not a new term. It's been around for many years. But what has happened is that over the last three years, this has accelerated in a big way. And identity is actually right in the center of it all, right? Um, so that's one aspect of that change. Now, how do you make identity the new firewall and hence the term identity security, right? So that gives you a bit of the thing. Then of course, there's the other part as well where you talk about um, over the last three years, besides the working habit, you will also see a change in the uh, workforce, right? The workforce mix. We're not just talking about, you know, remote worker versus on-prem worker, right? But think about it. There's also this whole movement called the gig economy. Contractors on the rise, right? And then in the last three years as well, you heard a lot about you know, digital workers, right? People are putting RPA bots in play. All of these are basically identity. And you think about it, to be able to manage them, give them the right access at the right time, no more, no less, is very important, right? And that's really how the evolution has happened um, over time where the move from a perimeter security has now translated into more an identity at the core and changing the way enterprise security are now being viewed and be kind of implemented. Now, boy, so this is interesting because we understand that in the, for large enterprises in particular, um, and let's use the, the financial services industry as mm -hmm. an example, mm -hmm. they've always been cognizant of the the, the value of restricting access and security. However, today, as you said, because of this fundamental shift in the way we are working, smaller enterprises are impacted as well. And with the rise of ransomware and, and bad actors globally, and particularly in Southeast Asia, where the, the awareness of, of, of the need for cybersecurity is only now becoming heightened how do you see this happening across industries that perhaps traditionally were not so concerned about identity management and security? <clears throat> um, that's a very good point uh, and question, Brian. I think um, it used to be cybersecurity is, you know, of uh, key focus in industry like financial. Very important. Right? But if you look at it because of the pandemic, because there's a, the way businesses and their customers consume, this, uh, consume their product and services has changed. A lot of organizations has also need to uh, evolve and you know, survive and they drive an accelerated digital transformation just to survive, right? And banks included, and even to the smallest mom and pop shop, right? Basically, you know, just think about it, during the, during the lockdown, people are now having to kind of order food and then get it delivered. Right, the mom and pop shop in the past, you know, you, you come to the shop and buy stuff, but now you have to order online and you know, everything is now basically um, going very much digital, right? Now, because um, of that change itself, what we found out, companies are accelerating their digital transformation. They're modernizing their environment, all industry, across all industry, medium size and large enterprises, they're all doing it. But what, what we found out as well is that in the haste to, you know, accelerate their digitalization, um, 
they have not caught up, their, their security posture have not caught up with this acceleration in digital transformation. And that in itself created a whole bunch of uh, risks, right? Because you're increasing, when you digitize, when you accelerate digital transformation, your attack surface actually goes up. But how do you change and modernize your enterprise security to, to be in sync with the digital transformation? That is very important. Now, if you look at some data stats, for example, in terms of, um, there was a report that came out from, um, um, uh, what do you call this? Uh, uh, FireEye and, uh, and McAfee last year, right? It actually says that 81% of global enterprises sees an increase in cyber attack and cyber incidences right, during the pandemic, right? So we do know that during the pandemic, it has gone up quite significantly. And one of the other things that we also realized as well is that um, if you look at um, um, another report by IDSA, it's called the uh, Identity Defined Security Alliance. It says that 84% of uh, cybersecurity breaches in the world are identity related. So that tells you that, you know, the importance of identity is so, so uh, important now, right? So two things will happen, right? One is that the security needs to evolve and accelerate into a transformation to catch up with the digital transformation. That's one. And what evolution we're talking about, that basically means that they have to now go beyond perimeter security into you know, um, zero trust uh, principle um, security and, you know, an identity security at the core of the, the enterprise security. Um, the other thing that they do need to kind of think about as well is that um, how do they continue to actually put in the policy that ensure that that can happen, right? I think that's going to be very important, right? So, so you asked me, why are the other industry um, seeing a necessity to kind of evolve? And this is really it because they are all transforming digitally and you actually see this becoming a big um, you know, uh, impetus for them to make that transformation. I'll give you one, um, one use case, right? One, one um, example of where this has actually been a, a very famous breach that happened in the US, um, Colonial Pipeline. I don't know whether you heard about it. Mm -hmm. Yes. Pipeline, yeah. it's, a, it's the American company that uh, delivered you know, gasoline and, and jet fuel to the Southeastern um, US, right? And last year, May, I think they were, they had a big ransomware attack, right? And they were actually, um, you know, uh, ransomware, they had to pay 4.4 million to event to restore their 5,005 pipelines, right? But even though they paid, they paid the ransomware, just within a matter of hours after they were, they were attacked, it still took them weeks to restore it, right? But the quick question here is that what actually were the cause of that? The cause of that is actually the attacker was able to find a credential of one of the employee from another web, use that to penetrate a VPN and create that hack, right? So, so the, this is but just one example. If you really kind of think about it, 84% of the world breaches are identity related. So if you apply that to, you know, to, to the volume of attack you have, you know, identity has become very, very um, crucial and important. So, Bui, one of the things that you uh, also published now, uh, SailPoint published uh, a, a report titled The Horizons of Identity, and this is focused on the APAC countries. And the, one of the conclusions was that many country, uh, companies are in a relatively early stage in their identity journey. Could you share with us some of the insights that came out of that? Because that's quite alarming then. Uh, given all the threats that are out there. Right, exactly. Um, so it wasn't just for APAC. Actually, we we actually had this um, study and, and what we call the maturity model build up. It's called a five horizon of identity journey, right? And um, it's, uh, we surveyed almost, we work with and surveyed with about 350 large enterprises across the world, with about 12 to 15% of that coming from APAC region, right? And what we found out is that 45% um, of the companies are actually uh, in what we call insufficient stage horizon one, right? So let me take a step back and give you a bit of perspective, right? There, there are five horizons in total, right? And if you look at it, the five horizon basically comprises of horizon one, where it's really company that's just at the start of this whole um, identity journey. And they, are, they, they don't really have a very... Um, strategic approach, they are very much fragmented across the organization. People do stuff because they have to solve one particular problem. Say, for example, an audit problem, right? 
And then horizon two is where the company say, hey, you know, I realize that identity is important and I have to go do something about it. But it's still very much manual, right? And it's, uh, you know, they start on a journey, but a lot of things are still done. Pen and paper, you know, Excel spreadsheet, right? Somebody keep an Excel spreadsheet, somebody that says, uh, Brian, you know, in this company has access to these five applications, you know, and, and uh, you know, you kind of manage it that way, right? You get the idea. And then horizon three is when people realize that, hey, you know what? This can't, this can't go on because manual, not only that the work is way beyond human capacity, um, it also has an inherent risk to it because of human error. So people started on this whole digitalization of the identity security uh, uh, journey, right? So they start putting platform and, you know, solutions in there, which is, uh, you know, uh, 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 helps them to kind of manage it. And, and it's at scale, right? They started on that journey. Horizon 4, and this is where it gets interesting, Horizon 4 is when you look at it and say, okay, I'm using advanced digital tools and also uh, predictive use cases, right? So what it means is that one, one of the key things that I, I will share a little bit as well is that the trend is happening is that earlier I mentioned about the number of, I, the, the mix of digital workforce and the workforce, right? It actually contributes to really a rise of the different mix of identity, but also the rise of number of identity. Just think about it, the OT, each OT device is one identity. If you kind of spread it out, the number of identity is huge, right? And if you start thinking as well that as you drive digital transformation, you know, the number of resources, technology resources, platform application you're putting continue to increase at a very big high rate. Now, if you apply the zero trust principle of never trust, always, always verify to this huge scale, very soon, you're going to be way beyond human capacity. And that's what Horizon 4 is about, right? Anticipating that huge volume of management you need to do on the, you know, on the identity and the ability to access to what technology. Um, you require some level of modern, um, you know, um, platform that's really very much my AI to give you that predictive part of it, right? Um, and, and that's where Horizon 4 is. Horizon 5 is all about um, you know, very extended and united identity um, um, strategy across. And Horizon 5 is kind of a like utopia, right? I think across the 300, over 50 people, customer we work with, there's 0% there at this point in time. So just give you a bit of mix, 45% uh, of Horizon 1, about 29% Horizon 2, 20% Horizon 3, and about 6% Horizon 4, right? And 0% horizon, horizon 5. So that's kind of what, what the mix is, um, um, how it looks like, and the different horizon maturity. Okay, boy, then let me ask you this. I'm a CIO from Indonesia. I, I run a large enterprise uh, with uh, multiple subsidiaries. I really am probably straddling Horizon 2 and Horizon 3. So mm -hmm. I'm starting my digitization journey. Yes, I have traditional ERP solutions, CRM solutions, and so forth, but I'm really upskilling. Mm -hmm. What are the, give us a 101 on what I need to do to ensure that my business is protected? Yeah, I, I think the first thing first is really to take a step back and ask yourself, right? Whether my, uh, my, my approach to uh, enterprise security, firstly, is it looking at from the right lens? Are we still looking at perimeter security or are we not accepting the fact that Perimeter security alone doesn't um, you know, uh, protect us, but really looking at identity security. I think that's going to be the first step, understanding that identity is your most critical control point for enterprise security. That's the first step, right? Then the second step, you're going to look at, you know, what do you have right now in your system, right? You say that I've started on Horizon 2, maybe Horizon 3 and 4 in between, right? So you might have already have some sort of identity management platform in place, but chances are they are legacy in nature, right? And, and, and that means that you need to ask yourself, right, if I were to kind of modernize it, what exactly am I, what, what, what exactly are the things that I got to look at, right? And it, to me, really modernizing the legacy identity management platform uh, is about answering these few questions, right? Can the platform address how the workforce dynamic has evolved and what does it mean for technology access, right? You have all the new multi-cloud and, you know, environment and everything. And, you know, what, what does it mean for the different type of identity that need to be managed and, and secured, right? And how do they, 
how does the platform allows the identity team or cybersecurity team you have in your organization to be able to get out of react mode but get in front of identity security requirement that are driven by your digital transformation initiative rather than just be reacting to ex, you know you know threat and attack right so so if you think about it there are three core components of modern identity security you know you have to consider right one is that whatever you're going to put in place it needs to firstly has the right intelligence right the 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 deep intelligence is important because you need to have a platform that gives you 360 degree view and deep insight to all your identity and their access need. that's the first thing you're going to have right Second, you have to be able to have it to be autonomous, right? Autonomous because you look at the volume and scale you're going to manage. It needs to be autonomous so that you can speed up your decision, make it easier and free up your identity team to focus on the more critical things to, to do, right? And third, it has to be able to seamlessly integrate it into your IT infrastructure so that you can embed the identity context into your entire digital ecosystem, right? And that's going to be critical. So all these three are needed so that you... You can evolve if you're a CIO of this company, you can evolve and adapt to the increasing complex environment you, you, you operate in and do it at a scale that matches your, your business. So that if you look at this key tenet of a modern identity security uh, solution, it means that you need to be looking at something that is built on firstly a platform that is built on uh, data intelligence and be able to be powered by AI so that you can actually do that you know, the predictive, your ability to catch the outlier. Like for example, one of the things that we do very well is that with our AI, um, so firstly our platform will build basically on a uh, AI platform, right? And with the data intelligence. And then on top of that, we have all the platform services like the workflow, the autonomous uh, automation and all this thing. But more importantly, one of the things that we have is what we call the outlier detection, right? If you're a bank, for example, you, you know that Every quarter, every month, probably, you have to do a certification process, right? You got to say, okay, these 50 employees of mine have access to this number of applications. Each one of them, I would say, certified, they are supposed to have all this access. Over time, it gets very tiring, right? Do you really look at all those certifications? It becomes a rubber stamping process. So everybody just kind of say, okay, certify, certify. It puts a risk, right? Now, with the AI, what we do with Outlier is that when we run that platform, the AI will pick up and say, okay, out of the 50 people in your, in your team, right, you shouldn't worry about the, you know, 45 of them because they are all pretty much standard. But here's five that's Outlier. Now, you can't do that with the, with, with, without an AI, right? Because what the AI does is that it then pulls out the Outlier for you, tells you these people as compared to their peer, are outlier. And then you'll be able to drill, and drill down further and say, why are they outlier? Maybe because he has five five unique access, which no, but none of his peer has it. Now, then what you do is that then you don't have to take, you don't have to ask your managers to then do the approval for that, but just kind of focus on, you know, those five which are outlier and figure out what to do with them. Are they, you know, can we certify them or do we need to kind of shut them out, right? So that's one aspect of it. So back to your point, right? If you look at that, then how do you ensure that you choose the systems and solution that allows you to kind of have that predictive um, aspect of it all. Yeah. Now, that, wait, yeah. I want to I wanna now zoom in on sale point. Mm -hmm. uh, we're, we're just on the cusp of 2023. What should we be watching out for from sale point uh, in this coming year? Um, you, you will continue to see us uh, con continue to innovate on those things. Um, I mean, what I share with you are just, um, you know, some of the innovation we just recently launched, right? Um, AI has been a very key part of what we will continue to build on. Um, in fact, the innovation, you know, over the 17 years is to kind of move from a very back office technology, just managing access of provisioning and so on and so forth, to really to the core and center of it all, right? And um, and what we will continue to do is to focus on that. Uh, you will see that um, outlier, um, you know, what I mentioned, the AI part is going to be key and center of it all. Um, we're going to drive very tight integration um, into many different um, you know, applications and, and sources within the organization. Um, like, for example, we will continue to drive um, integration into uh, SAP environment, ERP environment. Right. Today, we have very tight integration of SAP security, um, you know, um, what you call the separation of duty, SOD. Um, and then if you look at next year as well, we're going to extend it beyond, um, beyond SAP into other 
um, at the ERP as well. So a lot of those um, um, continuously focusing on driving the extensibility and providing the, uh, you know, uh, seamless integration um, into, into many, many um, different applications as well. Wei, it's been a really interesting conversation. I've actually learned a lot. But before we leave, any final thoughts to leave? I'd like to leave the audience with. Yeah, I think one of the things that I would say is that as a, as a, a C level of an organization, right? I mean, one, one of the things that you guys will all struggle with is really this very simple question, right? Um, how do I balance this acceleration of digital transformation that drives business outcome fast? And at the same time, making sure that we're secure, right? Because they almost as a tension, right? The, 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 as you go faster, as you go more secure, you have more things to do, right? So it, it is an HO problem, right? The tension is going to be there. We think about that a lot. Um, and, and we do believe that, um, you know, this tension can be managed and should be managed, right? And, um, and, and one of the common problems that many organizations will um, uh, struggle with, as a, as a mistake they make, is that, they start to look at this identity as a one-off project versus a journey, right? And you need to think about it as a journey because it's a continuous evolution, right? You can't, you can't start off this project and say, okay, I'm done, right? Because if you look at a bank, for example, with 5,000 applications and 50,000 employees, right? Onboarding that 5,000 application into your identity um, 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 security environment will take multi years, right? So it's a, it's a journey, it's an evolution. Now, one of the things that I would urge um, all um, C-level um, executives in, in company to think about is that don't make a mistake of you know, thinking of identity security program in a way that is too, um, too shallow, too narrow, and too short. What I mean by that, let me unpack that a little bit for you, right? So what it means is too shallow, too, too shallow it means is you know, thinking of identity security just purely from the perspective of trying to solve an audit problem, as an example. We all know that solving an audit problem well, doesn't make it a band-aid solution in yeah. terms of that, looking at it as a band-aid. Yeah, right, exactly. So, you know, solving audit problem, you can fluff, you can pass with flying color and yet you still would have an identity security issue, right? So that's, that's to me is looking at it being too shallow versus rather than deep, right? The other one is looking at it too narrow versus then wide, right? So I think that is very important, right? So what I mean by that is that looking at it as a, um, you know, a the stream lanes of just protecting an access or protecting the privilege access, uh, you know, rather than looking at it in totality, right? We all know that, you know, you, you can't just look at some giving a key to somebody to go into your environment, but not telling them which, which room they can go into. Right? And that's what access management is about. So you have to look at it in totality. The other issue is really looking at it um, too short versus long, right? And this is actually stemmed from the fact that many companies started off with a good vision, but because of the implementation tends to be on the legacy system and they are hard and heavy and they're monolithic. Um, and, and after a while, it becomes too difficult. So what happened is that most of the company decided then to just kind of abandon that brand vision and then just focus on applying identity security to only the most prominent resources and most prominent application to a small set of users. But you and I know is the most insignificant identity and access point that becomes the biggest threat in the organization, right? So I think, so my last point is that don't compromise, right? I think you need to understand that to address this thing uh, in totality, you need to really look at it um, in a full comprehensive approach um, overall. So hopefully that will give you a bit of an idea on um, how the world has changed from an enterprise security perspective. Uh, Boy, thank you very much for taking your time to be on the show. It was very enjoyable. Thank you. Thanks, Brian. I'm Brian Fernandez, and we've been speaking to Chen Yu Boy, the Senior Vice President APAC of SailPoint Inc. on Vistax Enterprise Technology Show. This video and podcast will be on our social media platforms as well as our website, www.vistax.asia. It'll also be on our syndication partners, TV stations, radio stations, and websites. Thanks a lot for tuning in.